So when condensation gets into an outdoor camera, it can cause a situation like this where you have a blurry image. And when my camera switches from night mode into day mode, it can't focus because there's vapor on the lens. So I'm gonna get into the camera, get it off the uh, tree outside, and see if I can seal it up and see what's causing the condensation. So all I'm gonna do here is take it off the tree. It's pretty straightforward. It's just four bolts holding it on. Then you open up that little watertight compartment and it's one Cat5 cable. It's power over ethernet, which is a great system. So that's what I'm doing right there. So there's the camera off the tree and I'm just showing you there's no condensation at this point on the camera lens, but often in the morning when it's cold out at night, there is. So whenever you bring anything into your house, just make sure it's, uh, there's no insects in there. Because as I was doing this, a small spider actually came walking out. I had to, had to get rid of it. You're showing the camera the front of the lens. Again, it doesn't look half bad right there. But like I said, early in the morning when it switches over is when you have a problem. But there's definitely got to be some kind of moisture behind the glass here. So here I'm just looking how to get into it. And the easiest way is to take a little pick, like an automotive pick, and just see if you can pull up on the outer edge. There are clips on the bottom and on the top of this little piece. So if you get this piece off, it reveals the infrared lights, and it also reveals the screws to take the front off of the lens. So if you look carefully, I actually stopped it for a second. There are a couple of clips on the top, and a couple of clips on the bottom. So take note not to break those off. So when you pull it off and put it back together, you have to release those clips. So I apologize for some of the terrible camera angles coming up. I thought everything was in view, but apparently it wasn't. So the screws were actually a T10, Torx, uh, Torx T10, and you need a real screwdriver. You can't use a little small one because they're on pretty tight. So. I removed three out of the four screws and the fourth one actually snapped off. But luckily the head snapped off and I was able to pull the whole front piece off. So you'll see. I'll loosen them with this. Wow, that was tight. That's very tight. Jeez Louise, man. Uh oh. There we go. I think that broke off in there. We'll see. That was the bottom right one. That's okay. I can hold it with three screws. Can hold it. Here's, here's the size of it right here. So one of them snapped off in there. Bottom right. I got to remember that. So once you remove all four screws, you can take the entire front of the camera off. So there's a, actually like a clear lens cover in there. And then you can actually get to the actual lens of the camera underneath, which is right there. And you see a little connector and that connector sends electricity to the infrared, infrared illuminators. Extremely important are these little desiccant or drying agent pellets, these little white things. All right, they're in every single camera. And if moisture gets into the camera, that's what stops condensation from forming. So it's extremely important that those things be either replenished or dried out in a microwave. Or I, in my case, I happen to have a whole packages of, of new ones of those. So I put new packages in. So I'm just taking the infrared connector apart so I can get to the other, the other uh, desiccant pellets, which I could not, they were stuck to the side of the camera. I get it out now. There we go. That opened a little bit, and there is a rubber gasket right here. I don't know if you can see, there's a rubber gasket right along the edge here. Okay. There 
Now the question is, where is the haze? So at this point, you have that black plastic piece I took off of the front, and you have the actual lens of the camera on the inside of that white thing. So I figured, let me just clean everything, put no fog uh, spray that I had on all the glass or plastic surfaces, and then I'm going to put more desiccant pellets in there and close it back up, seal it up pretty well, and then hopefully that's going to do the trick. But we'll see. So as long as I have this thing off of the tree, I'm going to seal all the gaskets there are to make sure no water or moisture is getting into the camera. There is a bottom compartment that you could actually access in order to change a couple of things about the camera manually. When it's outside, I'm just opening up the little access door and I'm going to recoat the gasket with like a lubricant and a sealant and then I'll close it back up. But this is just as long as I have it down, I might as well make sure it's, it's watertight and airtight. Take a little bit of this Molly Coat stuff. Just a little better waterproofing, that's all. Okay, it's tight now. All right, let's clean the lens. This is actually the solution. I'm not gonna spray it right on the lens. Again, sorry about the crummy camera angle. I thought it was being filmed, but that's actual lens cleaner and an actual lens cleaning cloth. And I'm cleaning the camera lens, which is in the white housing. And then I'm going to clean the plastic part that was attached to the infrared illuminators. So that's what I'm doing there. Let's see. I also have fog defender, Zeiss fog defender. Looks okay. I'm going to do this. So let's hit the outside of this first. Actually, I'll spray that again. Do the inside. It's a whole circle over there. Good enough for this neighborhood, as they say. Let's do this. Oops. All 
felt like the lens was completely fogging up. Try it with this again. Camera lens cleaning cloth, okay? This is and this is plastic, so try to be pretty careful on this. I don't think this makes a significant difference. Okay. So again, not right in front of the camera. I thought it was. But a, a long time ago, I bought a whole bag of those little pouches of drying pellets, desiccant pellets, and I use them for various stuff, things around the house. But I just happen to have them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two of them in each compartment where those plastic bags were, because uh, I think there was more in each plastic bag. So I'm putting two in each side, so that's four. I'm also putting one on top where there was some just airspace. So I'm putting five packets of desiccant in there. That should be enough. Maybe I will. All right. Here we go. Couldn't hurt. I stupidly clipped this back in before I put, I had actually taken the gasket off at the front of the camera. So I should have put the gasket on first and then <laughs> clipped that back on. But I clipped it first and then I didn't feel like pulling it apart again because it wasn't easy. You could see my big fat fingers in front of the lens, but it wasn't easy to get it back together. So what I wound up doing is I wound up putting the gasket over that part in order to get it onto the front of the camera. So I made extra work for myself like I always do, but it wound up working out fine. You know, that's uh, that clipped in fine and the gasket sealed completely around the camera uh, lens. You'll see in a second. So you can see I realize in a second, oops, no gasket. After I put it, put it in there and I noticed the gasket on the table. There it is. What an idiot I am. So in order to put it on, I had to put it over slide it over the black part right there, slide it over the wire, and then it can sit right on the front of the camera where I got it out from right there. There's a little channel for it, so you, you can't put it on the wrong way. It only goes one way. But there I am sticking it back in there, and I had to put it, push it around that desiccant packets. It was a bit of a pain. That's why I didn't actually tape it or film it, I should say. I had to pick the camera straight up and look I put it in an inch from my face in order to figure out and, and, and make sure it fit perfectly. So I couldn't do that and film at the same time, so sorry. These screws hold the gasket tight against the lens. And this bottom right one. Since there's no screw head to seal against, I figured let me stick some silicone in there just to seal it off from any moisture. So that's what I'm doing there. I just put it in the hole, kind of stuck it in there with my finger and put a little bit around the edge, around this seam on the outside also. Right. I don't think any water's getting in there. That should be good. A little bit on the edge just in case. Next, I'm going to put the black frame around those infrared lights. And you remember there's clips on the top and on the bottom. So you put it on the top first and then you snap the bottom in. Right, let's stick this back on there. So it kind of snaps in. Again, that you can't really mess that up either. I'm just going to go first and I snap the top in. All right, that's it. Either it's gonna work
I'm just making sure it's completely clean here, which it was. And then I brought it back outside and climbed back up onto the tree and reattached it. Pretty easy. So after I put the camera back up, I had to turn it on, refocus it, and it's been good ever since. That's the picture. It's actually clear and good. So thanks a lot for watching. And I apologize for the crummy, <laughs> crummy voiceover.